Happy New Year, everybody. Uh, from me to you and everybody you know and everybody in the world, you know, all my best wishes for a very hap happy, peaceful, and fruitful New Year for everybody. And I, I mean it, you know, when you think about it, really, if everybody you knew and everybody they knew and so on was a little bit happier and had a little bit more in their lives of what matters to them, you know, peace, love, money, excitement, whatever it is, right? If everybody had a little more, the world would be a better place. So, uh, you know, do what you can to make the world better for yourself and for those around you, even though even people you don't like, especially people you don't like, actually. And I think we'll all be better off. Anyway, uh, this is my iPhone. And uh, I'm going to show you something that got me to thinking. Here's the text messaging mode. And I just want to clear this out. I don't want to show anybody's name on here. So here's the text messaging mode. And uh, the bottom row of buttons isn't working. You can see I can't hit the space bar. I'm trying to hit the space bar. I'm trying to hit return or one, two, three. It doesn't work. The bottom row here of my iPhone, the bottom row of the touch screen, is not working. Uh, it's been this way for a couple of months. I'm not, I could find, I could figure out when I bought it. I don't remember exactly, but uh, it's been less than two years, that's for sure. And uh, you know, I, I've dropped it a couple times and, and I've hacked around with it, you know. But I restored the firmware, and uh, everything else on the phone works. And it's back to the, you know, I put it back on the real Apple firmware and stuff. And uh, it still doesn't work, touchscreen. And I took it to Apple, took it to the App Store the other day, yesterday. I was uh, went to the movies, saw Frost Nixon. Yeah, really, really interesting, relevant, compelling story. The actual movie, I thought it was kind of so-so. The acting, I think the guy who played Nixon did a good job, but uh, the movie itself, they could have done more with. But anyway, so I took the phone into the Apple Store, and uh, they were like, yeah, you know, this happens, we've seen it before. And not getting into, you know, whether or not they could fix it, because it's not under warranty more, any of that kind of stuff. Got me to thinking, uh, I, have a, I have a good friend who's not a tech junkie like I am, you know. She's got a job that has nothing to do with technology. and uh, But she's a cell phone. And her cell phone has, uh, she's gone through, it's either five or six cell phones in the past two years. Not because, you know, she keeps getting a new cell phone because she wants to try different ones. Because they keep breaking. She's got low-end cell phone, you know, kind of basic phone with, you know, like what everything comes with these days, text messaging, you know, camera, that kind of stuff. Doesn't use the multimedia stuff, doesn't, you know, doesn't have a data plan for web browsing, just uses it for phone calls, messaging, and uh, taking pictures. Um, and she's gone through like five phones in under two years. Different manufacturers. Um, hasn't dropped them or, you know, put it through the washing machine or stepped on it or run over it with a car or anything. They just keep breaking. And so this is the thing. This, this, this thing got me thinking. Uh, I've thought about this a lot over the years, but just kind of to mention it. The thing with this industry, the thing with the consumer electronics industry in particular, it's not just the consumer electronics industry, but uh, the thing with consumer electronics in particular, this industry is geared towards innovation, not towards quality, in my opinion. Uh, I've been covering the cell phone industry for about, what, going on three years now, but uh, I've been covering consumer electronics and computers for over 10 years now for different websites and uh, uh, online, or, or rather print magazines and stuff like that, and I've just been a tech junkie my whole life, you know, as long as I remember. And things move so fast now, and it's such a big industry, and there's so much money involved in everything. Everything's geared towards in innovation, but not really so much towards quality. Um, and it's a dual-edged sword because the innovation makes things really fun, but the flip side is that all the innovation sets up this industry where the whole point is to get me and you, the consumers, to want new stuff and to buy more stuff before the usefulness of our old stuff is really truly outlived. And then what happens is that so many people now are doing that and there are fewer and fewer people who buy a cell phone or a laptop or a VCR or whatever and plan to keep it for 20 years that they're just, you know, the, the quality of these things is going down because the idea is not to build you something and sell it to you and have it last forever, but rather to build you something, sell it to you so you'll get into it and so then in, you know, 18 months when the new version comes out with new features, 
you'll want that one instead. I mean, you know, uh, my last laptop has been fixed six times, I believe, under warranty. Um, you know, and it's got a defect in it that I was told by the manufacturer. Now, we'll fix this for the, the length of the life of the thing. Don't worry about the warranty. If, if this particular thing keeps breaking, it's a, a crack, a known defect, a crack in the casing of the machine. Just keep bringing it back. We'll keep replacing it. That's just, you know, the company policy. It's a known defect. And these things happen. I'm not saying that a $100 cell phone or $1,000 laptop, you know, has to be engineered to last for a million years. Um, but they should be la engineered to last for a little longer than they do, I think. And on top of that, you know, it, it's, it's two things I'm sort of trying to get at here. One is that the quality has taken a nosedive. I've had different people since I've been working, you know, with phone dog and covering the cell phone industry. So many people come up to me and the two things I get are, you know, which new thing, I want to buy a smartphone. Which smartphone should I buy? And why can't, why does my phone keep breaking? Why can't they make a phone that will last me the length of my contract at least? You sign up for a two year contract, you get a phone and it breaks after 18 months and then you're kind of stuck because you're not yet at the point where you can just get a new two-year contract and get a new free phone. Um, but also, oftentimes, you're out of warranty already. And so then you're stuck. Like, what do you do? Do you renew two years, and then you're locked into two more years with your carrier, but then you have to pay for the phone? I'm talking about not the junkies, not the people who always want the newest thing. The people who just want the phone that works, they pay their 50 bucks a month for service. You know, they just want a free on-contract phone. They don't really know about buying unlocked phones and all that kind of stuff because the market in the U.S. isn't set up that way. In Europe, it is. People buy unlocked phones all the time. In the U.S., it's set up so that you get a free phone when you sign up for a 24-month commitment at 50 bucks a month. So your free phone really costs you, you know, $720 plus fees and taxes and all that stuff, uh, along with the service and everything. But what I'm saying is that that's how it's set up. And then after 18 months, your phone breaks because it wasn't engineered to last, and then you're stuck. And then your whole free on contract thing goes out the window because then you wind up, you know, signing up for two more years, but also paying 75 bucks for a low end phone because consumers in this country, in America in particular, don't know any better because the whole system is set up to get you to just keep buying new and new and new stuff. The flip side of it, or the other, the other thing I'm talking about, not the engineering quality, is that the whole, the whole, uh, the whole innovation cycle. Again, you know, it may be changing a little bit with phones now. You know, phones and laptops. We've kind of hit this plateau, maybe, where you've got, you know, in the cell phone world, even though Windows Mobile and BlackBerry and, uh, you know, Symbian have been offering, you know applications that users can purchase and download and install themselves to extend the functionality of devices forever. Apple really made it a consumer thing because they're so good at marketing and packaging, packaging the experience. That the uh, app store for iPhone and iPod touches. Now I think you're going to see people who have their device and for most people a device like the iPhone or the iPod touch does everything you know hardware wise. You don't really need a lot more. And instead, they're going to be spending money in the app store. So instead of, you know, after two years going out and buying a new device, they might just have their device and want to just, you know, spend five, ten bucks here and there to extend its functionality. Similarly, I think in the, in the computer world, you're seeing a leveling off. The whole rise of netbooks is because, you know, a full-on laptop has more horsepower than your average user needs. Again, I'm not talking about the hardcore gamer or the person who creates media does flash development or video editing or you know stuff like that for a living but the basic user who wants web and email and that kind of stuff instant messaging you know listening to music watching videos can get a netbook for 500 bucks and it's fine for them so you may see kind of a leveling off in terms of you know what the consumer wants but the thing is the companies are still going to be looking to sell you a new device every couple of years because that's how it works and what you get out of this, again, you get two things. One is you get innovation, which is great, because you really do see innovative new things. You see, you know, laptop computers that can handle full-on video conferencing, which is just amazing. You know, I've been using it for work. I've been using it for personal reasons. It, it enables me to, uh, you know, work for a company that's not based where I live, and we can video chat to have meetings. It enables me to stay in touch with friends and family in other parts of the world. It's fantastic. 
Um, so you get all this innovation, which is fantastic, but then what you also get is you get this creation of a perceived need. The consumer gets, you know, I get so sucked into this whole thing, and oh man, I really need 3G. I really need WiMAX. I really need Core 2 Duo. You know, I really need, uh, you know, whatever, USB 2 instead of USB 1, these kinds of things. And it's a tricky thing, and it's a frustrating industry because, you know, in a lot of ways, it's an awesome industry. It's so exciting, so much new stuff, it's so much fun, there's so many uses for it, it's terrific. The other side, it's frustrating because, you know, when I get people who say to me, man, why, why do I have to go through six low-end phones before my contract is up? I don't understand it. My phone keeps breaking. Why, why can't I just get a phone that works? Or I get people who say to me, you know, man, I, what's a good laptop for my 12-year-old my kid? My 12-year-old kid doesn't want, you know, my old laptop because they can't do video conferencing on it, or they can't, it doesn't work well for Web 2.0 apps, or all these kinds of things, and it changes so fast, and you get caught up, and you spend so much money, and it creates this desire, and what I'm saying is really think about it, you know, the industry is set up like this, what if, what if there was a company whose whole point was to create a really solid phone that you wouldn't have to replace for five years, or a really solid laptop you wouldn't have to replace for five years, would you buy it? Or would you not buy it because you knew that from five years from now, your machine is going to be obsolete because of features? That's what I'm wondering. If things were engineered to last, you know, if, if cell phones and laptops were engineered physically to perform the way that, that say, a uh, high-quality German-engineered car, you know, out here in California where rust isn't an issue because of the weather, you see uh, Mercedes diesels from the 70s running all over the place because they were built to last and they're taken care of and they last. If consumer electronics were built that way, would you be happy spending $1,000 now on a laptop that will not break for five years? Or would you say, you know what, it's not worth it, man. I'll spend 600 on the plastic one that I know is going to break in two or three years, but that's okay because by then I'm going to want to replace it anyway because there'll be new things out and faster chips and all that stuff. You know, is that just how it is, or is it frustrating? Are you really, you know, are you feeling like some of the people I know are like, why can't I get a phone that's going to last? That's what I'm like.